let us see one of the problem. So, in this current problem is the adsorption problem, it is similar problem which we did earlier. So, this time the adsorption is on a crystalline surface. So, it says a simple model for adsorption of a monoatomic gas, to make it simpler we have taken monoatomic gas at low pressures. So, low pressure means you assume it is an ideal gas is adsorbed on a crystal surface so that its energy of the adsorbed gas molecule. So, the gas is adsorbed on the crystalline surface, energy landscape is given by this expression. U which is a function of the coordinates is equal to some sort of function, the potential at a equilibrium position and then a contribution. Then it says that the vibrations motions within the plane of the crystal surface has a weaker force constant than the vibrational motion perpendicular to the crystal surface. What does it mean? It means the force constants which are along the horizontal direction is very less. So, you can assume that they are the atoms nearby that particular central atom is stationary. So, what is happening is a perpendicular vibration. So, it is following based on this statement the Einstein model. So, it says it has a weaker force constant than the vibrational motion perpendicular to the surface. When it goes to the perpendicular, it means it is vibrating across this direction rather than this direction. Okay. So, it means if this is the direction, you have to assume it at Einstein model. So, what is the Einstein model? It means it will vibrate an equal frequency in all the directions. So, the partition function for the pure gas molecule, the gas molecule adsorbed on the crystal surface. So, pure gas molecule means the gas which has not adsorbed onto the surface and adsorbed molecules means the gas atom which has adsorbed to the surface. So, these are two different things. Now, the set of questions follow, it states what is the ground state energy of an adsorbed molecule? First question. Second question is what is the canonical partition function for n identical adsorbed molecules on m lattice sites? So, this you are quite familiar, so it means that you have this different sites, so if this is the x, y, z direction, so if these are m in number, so obviously m is greater than n, so n is the gas molecules. So, if you will try to adsorb onto the crystalline surface, okay. so what is that partition function? So, it says to develop that function in terms of q gas and q adsorbed. And you would also develop adsorption adsorb for this system assuming that the adsorbed molecules are in equilibrium with the ideal gas. Whenever it, these words come, it is equilibrium, it means you have to equate their chemical potential, that is the simplest way. So, mu of gas is equal to mu of adsorbed gas, because the chemical potential same means there is no such adsorption happening, that is the steady state equilibrium state is reached. So, these are the things you should pay attention while you attempt any problem. So, let us do the first part. So, the first part uh, you must be aware that uh, we have this frequency, the energy of the frequency as E n just to remind you, the Einstein frequency is nothing but n plus half into h v e, okay. this is the Einstein frequency and it, it says in the ground state. So, ground state means when I write these numbers 0, 1, 2, it is the 0 state, that is the ground state. So, at a 0 state, it will be half h v e. So, half of h nu e. So, remember we have to find out what is nu e. Now, this nu e will be equal in all direction x, y, z. So, we have to find some information from that particular interatomic potential, the potential of the adsorbed gas onto the surface, how we can obtain. So, the easiest way is to you take the derivative. If you take the single derivative, it will give you force until double derivative, it will be the force constant. So, let us take a double derivative, it will be the force constant. If we know the force constant, then we know this also. So, if this is the frequency, we know this is equal to 1 by 2 pi, then this is f or the force constant f by m. And you know this, so obviously this force constant, you know it is an outcome of double derivative. So, d to u by d of r square. Okay. So, let us write down the expression and do the derivative of that. So, u of x, y, z is equal to u of x 0, y 0, z 0 plus some contribution. What is that contribution? Alpha by 2, this is as per question given in the question x minus x naught square y minus y naught square. Okay, then it is closed, then again you have a 
term with beta. So now you take the derivative of this expression with double derivative, so you get force constant. What are the force constant? So you get du upon dx. If you take with respect to coordinates, let us take the coordinates. First you take du by dx, du by dy and then du by dz because we have taken r, r is a vector. So r is consisting of x, y and z coordinates, so we will take the derivative across x, y and z coordinates respectively. You take du dx or you take du dy, it will be the same answer. Why? Because the expression is remains the same whether you take x or y. So I will do once for x, it will be similar for y. So let us do one for x. So it will be, if you see these are all constants, if you do the derivative it will be 0, this is also 0 because there are no terms of y and x involved here. So you only have terms in the middle expression. So if you do the derivative correctly, you will get alpha by 2 into 2 into x minus x0, okay, because it will not operate on this particular factor. So this is nothing but alpha into x minus x0. Now you do double derivative of this, it will be simply alpha. And what is this alpha? So this double derivative is nothing but f, this is f. So it means if this is true, so if this is f, so you can replace this f and alpha. So you know what is f, from this expression you know what is f. So from this expression you replace the value of f with alpha. So Ve equal to 1 by 2 pi here, f is alpha, so you have alpha by m, okay. So like this you will get 1 for x direction, 1 for y direction, but in the z direction what you will get is, again you will get a similar expression. but you have beta by 2. So it means I will have two terms with respect to x and y which is similar and one term with respect to only beta when I do with respect to z, du by dz. So you do du by dx, you do du by dy and you also do du by dz, okay. du by dz and then further d2y by dx, dz square again will give you only beta, okay. So if you subsume all the results, so you will be having Vex, Vey and Vez. So if you write like this, so it will be u0 then becomes equals to u of x0, y0, z0. You have this uh, plus sign because plus. Now what we are going to do is because we need to know the ground state, so we have to write this all expression in terms of alpha. So what is that expression is nothing but because in the ground state energy is ground state energy, you know I from this expression it is simply h nu e ground state energy E0 in this expression it will be simply half of h v e. Now when I talk of x it is in x direction, when this is y is in y direction and e in z direction, okay. These are the three differences you will be having. So I will have something in the ground state plus half of this. So it will be h by 2 into Vx plus Vy plus Vz. This is the expression Vx plus Vy plus Vz. So it means that now I can write down the entire expression at ground state. So you have x0, y0, 0, z0 plus the energy contribution at ground state is this. Now we have expression for Vx, Vy, Vz. So from this expression, this Vx, Vy, Vz, I can replace this one. You write for x, you write for y, you write for z and substitute the values. If you do that, Vx and Vy will be similar, just two times of this expression will be equal to Vx plus Vy and Vz will be different because it will have a beta term. So if you write this, you will get simply equal to h by 2, the 4 pi and root m will come outside and it will simply 2 alpha, 2 root alpha plus root beta. It is actually root alpha plus root alpha because for Vx, Vy it is root alpha, 2 times root alpha, 4 pi is here already this is 2 pi, okay. So if you do that, you get 4 pi and root m, you are taking common root m outside. This is the way you do it. So this is the ground state expression. This is the first part of the problem, part A. Now let us go to part B. So part B says that uh, what is the canonical partition function. So for the canonical partition function, what you need to do is that you need to write out the expression. So there will be an expression the overall partition function which will really due to the internal energy and and uh, product of internal energy into vibration energy. So internal energy you know 
because that is what we have got that is the ground state energy is the internal energy and then it will be have a product with respect to vibration energy let us write that. So, but before that let us write the partition function what is the form of partition function Q n m t because it is a n molecules adsorbed on m sites at t temperature. So, it will be equal to you know how many ways this n factorial can distribute upon that that is nothing but m by n factorial by n minus m factorial okay q to the power of n this is it this is the formula which we have done earlier. So, now here q adsorbs partition function for q adsorbed will be the product of two things one is e to the power of minus u x 0 y 0 z 0 by k t and then you know the vibrational partition function will be product of each other. So, you have vibrational partition function in three direction x direction y direction z direction get the product of all this. So, if you get the product of all this it will be simply equal to q vibrational in the x direction q vibrational into the z direction q vibrational in the sorry I should write y first y direction and then z direction. So, now by this time you know what are the expression for vibrational term of x, y and z direction. So, this is some term which relates to the internal energy of the adsorbed gas molecules with the crystal atoms at their lattice points and this is the contribution due to the perpendicular vibration across x, y and z direction. So, together they will give the partition function. So, if I, I can write to write down you know this. So, I can write down this q vibrational x q vibrational into y q vibrational into z this is nothing but e to the power of minus h nu x by 2 k t 1 minus e of h nu x by k t this is for the q x term and the y term will be similar h of e y k t by 1 minus e to the power of minus h v y by k t. So, it will be the 2 here. Nothing new this expression I have already told you because of the perpendicular contribution in x y z this is a hyperbolic x v z. So, this is the three different terms. So, now you can write down in terms of the vibrational temperature term e to the power of minus theta x by 2 t 1 minus e to the power of minus theta x by t this expression then e to the power of minus theta y by 2 t 1 minus e to the power of minus theta by t e to the power of minus theta z by 2 t 1 minus e to the power of h of sorry not will be h it will I write in terms of vibrational numbers temperatures t this is the expression. So, obviously this theta x I can write down is nothing but h v x by k or you can write down further it is nothing but h k into this. So, we know this expression now because alpha we got from the previous expression which is same as theta y. Okay. So, this is what it is. So, now this expression uh, you can then use to find the overall partition function. Now, let us come to the expression for the part C which says we develop an isotherm isotherm. So, for that you have to take the ln q value. So, if you do the ln q properly take the logarithmic value of that q value. So, this is nothing but ln of m factorial minus ln of n factorial minus ln of m minus n factorial okay, plus n ln of q adsorbed okay, because q adsorbed was to the power of n and then you have m factorial by n factorial by m factorial divided by n factorial into m minus n factorial. So, I am taking the log both sides. Now, you can use Stirling's expression and uh, do this. So, I will just write the one expression then I will finally write the answer m ln m minus m 
minus n ln n plus n minus m minus n ln of m minus n. I am just expanding the factorial terms by Stirling's approximation. Okay, plus m minus m plus n ln. The last term remains the same. Now just uh, simplify all these terms. Open the brackets and simplify all these terms. If you simplify all these terms, you will get uh, you will get m ln m minus n ln n minus m minus n ln of m minus n plus n ln of q itself. So now this actually these all terms will cancel out. This will this. So this is what it is remaining. Okay, but we know that uh, a equals to minus k t ln q. A is equal to minus k t of ln q. Helmholtz free function. So, if you want to find out this expression a equal to minus q ln t because I will be needing this a. Why? Because for this I require mu of adsorption. So, mu adsorption is nothing but dou a by dou n to the power of m by t okay, keeping m and t constant. So, what you do first is on this equation take the ln q value and multiply by minus k t and then take the derivative. If you do the mathematics correctly you will get finally be equal to uh, ln q the derivative term will be coming as k t ln n minus a k t ln of m minus n minus k t ln of q gas equal to mu gas. So, this mu gas we know this is the entire expression is equal to mu gas, but uh, mu gas we know is nothing but minus k t because this mu adsorption is equal to mu gas. Okay. Why is this so? Because if you look at I told you these are the suppose these are your sides. Now when, when something comes inside so obviously you have the partition function of the gas here and one which is getting attached to here you have q of adsorbed. So, this q adsorbed, q adsorbed are the partition functions of the gas phase and the adsorbed phase. So, this mu will be same. So, mu gas of equal to mu of adsorbed. So, that is what equal. So, so, I am writing here it is mu gas. So, but mu gas we know is nothing but minus k t ln of q gas. Okay. So, now you have to equate this expression with this. So, if you equate it, k t will cancel out. So, what you get is simply a simple very equation that is n by m minus n is equal to the ratio of their partition function adds up by. So, this is the relation between the fractional coverage versus the partition function. Okay. So, now let us also develop the isotherms we have done this far. So, isothermals will be pretty much easy and just ex that expression only just expand it you will get the answer. So, you have n equal to multiply it m minus n into q adsorbed q. Okay. So, here what you get is if you simplify it so m into q adsorbed by q gas q adsorbed by q gas let us suppose I take it in bracket minus n into q adsorbed by q gas like this I write okay. n is equal to this or n into 1 plus q adsorbed by q gas is equal to m of q adsorbed by q gas okay fine so i have taken this part to the lhs so i get this so this the fractional coverage i can also write in this manner that was the so q adsorbed by q gas divided by 1 plus q 
adsorbed by q gas okay and this you divide again with this one you will get 1 upon 1 plus because this will be 1 so you will have only a one term q gas by q adsorbed so this is the expression the final expression for the fractional coverage in the final term what you have is so q gas is independent of pressure so if it is independent of pressure you assume it to be ideal gas so q gas i can write down as so it will have the translational partition function because it is uh, i am assuming it to be a monoatomic gas which is given in the question for a single atom it takes expression like this or i can write down 2 pi m k t 3 by 2 let us replace v by the ideal gas law so you will get n gas number of molecules of gas by into kt by p this expression so just ex replace this q gas from the previous expression we obtained by this expression so you will get n by m final expression i am writing n by m you will get nothing but equal to 1 upon the, the entire big term will be there 1 plus 2 pi m k t by h square by 3 by 2 n gas k t by p then divided by then the terms which is q adsorption q adsorb partition function u of x 0 y 0 z 0 okay into because the vibrational partition function the x and y direction are same so i can the product of these two can be written as square any of them because theta x equal to theta y so i will write any way i can write theta x here and do a square and i'll do a square of this term but the y this will be difference theta in the z direction this is the entire expression okay So it means I can uh, calculate the fractional coverage if I know the mass of the gas molecule and the pressure and also a potential what is the potential of the gas atom onto the crystalline surface and the vibrational temperature in the x, y and z direction. So with this I can actually calculate the adsorption isotherm which is given here. So this concludes our lecture, so please go through this Sandler's book, you will find more about the Einstein model and uh, also follow what are the assumptions through it. Okay. In the next lecture what we will do, we will be discovering and exploring the Debye model, thank you. Mm -hmm.